Mikebot out. This is Mikebot. Today I'm going to be doing the configuration parts upgrades overview part two. So I've learned a lot since the last video I did, which was a week ago. So 3D printing is really complicated. It's not for non-technical people. You need to do a lot of reading, a lot of studying, learn how the product works and everything. And it's been an interesting learning curve, but it's been a week now and I think I've got it mostly figured out. So I ran into my first issue, first major issue the other day, which was the nozzle clogging. So I spoke to some people, they said there's two, three different solutions. You can either do a hot end fix, there's a famous one called Luke's hot end fix. Uh, it can be a little bit complicated, uh, requires you to be hands on and do the work and all that. Or you can clean these nozzles regularly, or you can just buy a bunch of them because they're fairly inexpensive. I think you get 26 for 15 bucks, so that's what I did. So I'm using my spare nozzle right now until the new ones come in. Basically, I'm just going to chuck these out every time they uh, get clogged and I'm going to try to clean them regularly. I've also picked up three hardened nozzles on top of uh, the uh, 20 pack or so of the brass nozzles. So until I figure out the hot end fix, I'm not going to I'm not going to bother with a hot end fix for now. I'm just going to keep chucking the nozzles out until I'm ready for it. I've ordered some extra Capricorn tubing. So when I am ready for the hot end. So ordered some more silicone sleeves, which go under the hot end. You can't see it here at the moment. And I also have several bed selections now. So I'm going to do a small unboxing here. So this is the PEI steel bed. And I'm not using a tripod today for a reason, because it's a mess in my 3D printer room, which I also use as a hydroponic room. So I'm just going to put the camera down. I'll edit this part out. So this is one of the best beds you can buy. This is called the PEI steel bed. So it's got a textured side and a smooth side. Um, this one does kind of look like it's been used a little bit. It's scratched. So uh, I am going to have to test it out pretty soon. Oh, it's not scratched. It's got a little film on it. So I'm going to have to remove. So I'm going to have to test it out at some point. But for now, I'm still using my magnetic bed, as you can see here. I bought my printer through Comgrow and they seem to have pretty good customer service. So I told them my magnetic bed was damaged and they literally just shipped me out a new bed and it came in today. So I now have a spare magnetic bed like so. I also have the glass bed that I showed in earlier videos. I tried using it once successfully, once unsuccessfully. It was interesting, but I am gonna keep it because I'm gonna be using it for ABS. Um, so I've been also, I do woodworking as a hobby. I have tons and tons and tons and tons of woodworking tools. So I've been grabbing miscellaneous stuff from my workshop to help me uh, do upgrades and stuff. So for the nozzle, for example, you need a six millimeter ratchet. So I brought a small one down here. Uh, it's right there actually. And uh, I also noticed that you, I have to start cleaning the bed in between prints. So I'm printing an S4 emblem here. So what I read online is this stuff is really good. So I picked up a bottle of that, bought a little uh, 99 cent spray bottle like so. And I spray it after every, uh, every print and keep the bed nice and clean. I also have all those little measures I showed you. Uh, so when I move the printer down here, measuring, leveling the bed with my electronic measuring tool and all those tools wasn't as good. The head was still grinding on the printer really bad and damaging the bed. So definitely, definitely get your feeler gauge and get used to using the 0.10 millimeter. Always level it manually. I was going to pick up the BL Pro, uh, BL Touch, I should say, to auto level the bed. But I've heard a lot of horror stories. I've heard a lot of success stories. I just figured I'll stick to manually leveling it. It's not that bad at all, actually, to manually level it. The next upgrade I have done, as you can see, there's a USB cable sticking out here. And what's this? Oh, nope, not a Raspberry Pi. This is a really old gaming PC I built a long time ago. Has Windows on it, Windows 7 actually. So what I did is uh, I read up OctoPrint is a really cool uh, 
uh, extension to your 3D printer. So what I did for my Windows PC is I had to download Python, I had to download Visual Studio, and then I had to uh, install Octoprint through command line. There's tons of instructions online for those of you that aren't familiar with that stuff. Very easy to set up on a Windows box. Then you go to a web browser, hit the IP address of your desktop, and then you can configure all the settings and you can see your printer status and everything from there. One of the main advantages of Octoprint is having a camera. Uh, it, it'll manually, uh, sorry, it'll automatically using AI watch everything going on and report back to the software. It's pretty neat stuff. I don't have a webcam yet. I know I have one somewhere around here. I can't bind it. When I do, I'm going to be connecting it. But for now, I'm using my EasyViz camera to watch everything. I do have EasyViz product reviews on my channel as well. For, feel free to check them out. So once Octoprint's installed, you can access it from any desktop you like, or even better, you grab your Android phone, log in, and it shows you everything here. So you can control your printer all from your phone now, just through that one USB cable using Octoprint on a system. Um, so what else? So I'm still using PLA. So for my time-lapse videos, they're all gonna be on PLA for now. My next product after I use the one, two, two and a half rolls I have remaining is gonna be PLA Plus. So look out for those time-lapse videos using PLA Plus. I eventually will upgrade to AVS. AVS will need that glass bed and I'm also gonna need an enclosure for this thing. So just do a little highlight here. So that's pretty much it. So uh, like I said, for leveling, Use the feeler gauge every single time, every corner. One, two, three, four. You go into your settings on the printer. You hit the Y axis, X axis, move them around. Keep measuring, measuring. Level accordingly, clockwise, counterclockwise to raise and lower the bed. Um, you can also print some upgrades as well. You can buy, print little, uh, um, like little leveling plastic things so you don't have to use a feeler gauge, but I like my feeler gauge. You can also, I have a, the Pro, the Ender 5 Pro, so I already have a lot of upgrades that came with it. Like, for example, the metal extruder, the Capricorn tubing, but I did order some more Capricorn tubing, two meters of it to be exact, so I can uh, experiment a little bit. I see a lot of people, they put little caps on everything, little caps and covers here. Uh, there's many, many different things you can print. I've been printing away a lot of different stuff, but the only actual upgrade I've done for the printer is just the, uh, the base for the board there. I am still running uh, Marlin 1.2, dot whatever it's at right now. I also rigged a little chain here to raise and hold this cable because it was grinding. The cable seems to have taken form uh, to where I had the chain holding it for a few days. So now it seems to be good like that and it's not grinding anymore. Uh, you can see there's a lot of dust on the tires. That's from the actual tires wearing down. Hopefully those don't need to be replaced anytime soon. Uh, these pieces here I don't need to replace, but the Capricorn tubing I ordered has those. I'm still waiting for the nozzle pack to get in. I have a few of them, a few different things coming in very soon. I'll do another video. We'll call it an upgrades video or update video. So for my review, what do I think of this printer? I think it's a pretty awesome printer. Is it easy to use? Hell no. It's complicated as hell. It's... <laughs> You need a lot of patience, a lot of time, and you need to be highly technical and very good with your hands. I work in IT. I've worked in IT my entire life. I'm very hands-on when it comes to building stuff. I work in enterprise IT now, so I'm less hands-on, but I haven't lost that touch. I built PCs, thousands of PCs and laptops from scratch, and I do woodworking. So I'm, I'm a pretty hands-on guy. So I recommend if you're gonna get into that, ask yourself, are you hands-on? Are you technical? To a certain degree you don't have to be deep 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 technical like you don't have to know every little detail of the printer but you need to know the basics like the z axis y axis x axis you need to know about the hot head under here the extruder the filaments um all the different power cables the com3 that goes in the back there uh the power supply voltage like just stuff like that so make sure you're ready before you pull the trigger on this so would i recommend you get a 3d printer if you have the time and patience definitely do it also the money although this is a budget printer at 500 bucks i think i've spent almost a grand now with all the different upgrades and different things i've done to it so uh, it is an expensive hobby it can get more expensive once you get into two three four five printers i don't plan to do any 
secondary printer yet until it'll be a while. I don't have the room nor the money for it. The room I can always figure out, but it's the money that's the issue right now. So eventually I will probably get a second one, just not right now. Will I get an Ender again? If they offer me a great deal, definitely. If I can't get a great deal, I'm going to save up and maybe try the Persa next. Or Perusa, whatever you call it. I've heard good things about it. So we'll see as time goes on. So, like I said, great printer. Great quality. Uh, the, my specific printer is great quality. Great build. Everything is great about it. Just a little more work than I expected. But that's okay. I'm figuring it out every day. As I learn more, I will upload more videos. And keep you guys all up to date. Guys and girls. So uh, right now I'm really excited about this Octo print I have going on. That was, love it. Instead of paying a couple hundred bucks for a Raspberry Pi, I just used an old gaming PC and found instructions on how to install Octo print on PC. So that's it for today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you liked my video, please like it. If you didn't like it, let me know why. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. It shows me... Uh, your way of showing uh, that you support me and you like what I'm doing and you want to see more stuff. So that's it for today. Mike Bot out.